The answer was harder than I thought. So I'm still working on Stemma, my own creature collector based off of science topics. And today, I wanted to talk about one of my gimmicky creatures. But what is a gimmick? Especially in a creature collector, in a menagerie of designs, isn't everyone already unique in their own way? So what do we actually mean by gimmick character? The term was initially about marketing ploys to attract more attention to a product. Is a product truly better than their competitors? It could be. Or not. The gimmick is only concerned about making it feel more valuable. Gimmicks used to be extrinsic, which means it has to do with how others perceive the product, rather than its actual qualities. That's why there's that negative connotation of how gimmicks feel like a trick, especially if the perceived value becomes much higher than what the product is truly worth. Using this definition, a gimmick Pokemon is a shiny Pokemon. Shinies are differently colored versions of a Pokemon that have a super low chance of popping up in the wild. But does a shiny Pokemon always have better stats? Does it have any exclusive moves? So far, not really. In fact, nowadays there are Pokemon with special marks, which can make a Pokemon feel even more unique and rare. But these Pokemon play the exact same way as the Pokemon of the same species. But to many people, the attachment to this unique appearance is valuable in of itself. But again, this mechanic applies to nearly every Pokemon. So what's an actual Pokemon species that could be called a gimmick? Amongst the over 1,000 Pokemon, a few of them have their own visual gimmicks. Pokemon 6th generation only had one new line of bug types, but they tried to make up for it by giving the final stage Vivium 20 different forms, depending on different climates and events. But you think that's a lot? Try looking at Pokemon's 8th generation with the customizable Al Creamy. 7 kinds of sweets and 10 different cream colors, including the shiny, can yield up to 70 unique combinations. But the most visually gimmicky Pokemon is all the way back from Generation 3, back when Pokemon were still sprites. Spinda, the Dizzy Panda, has 4 spots on their body, and their placement per Spinda is randomly decided by a piece of code that has over 4 billion combinations. Though the actual number of possible Spindas would be smaller as the dots could overlap, but there are plenty of other visual gimmicks. But Sight is not the only sense gimmicks can appeal to. Chaton has an auditory gimmick where you can record and customize their cry. While the sound got crushed, people could still say some inappropriate words, so Pokemon would remove this gimmick in future games. But the concept was very novel. It's not like changing the cry affected the gameplay. Wait a second, the louder your recording was, the higher chance Chatot's signature move had to confuse the opponent? We're entering into a new definition of what a gimmick is. Pikachu stole the red and yellow colors, and that's what I call gimmick and French from the highest order. Uh -oh. now, the term became popular in professional wrestling. The wrestlers don a character to establish a fan base, attracting more attention. So this persona was called a gimmick. Still mostly extrinsic with visual flares and theme songs, while their actual strength wasn't really dependent on what they wore. Their gimmicks just changed the themings of their intros, signature moves, and finishers hold up. If these wrestlers didn't have their gimmicks, would the outcome really be the same? Would they have used those specific moves in the match? Would they play out the same storyline? Now, going from watching fighting games to playing fighting video games? Gimmicks started to adopt a different meaning, as different characters in these video games would have their own themed movesets and playstyles, and gimmicky moves can change what one would consider standard gameplay. Other than typing, there are three factors in a Pokemon that can affect how a turn plays out. Starting with moves. Ever since the first Pokemon game, there have been signature moves, moves that no other Pokemon can learn, like Chatot's Chatter. While having access to a unique move sounds promising in our quest to define a gimmick Pokemon, signature moves alone don't make a gimmick Pokemon. Sure, they're unique, but if a Pokemon never finds a use to use the move, most people wouldn't recognize them as a gimmick. Plus, 
Many signature moves are shared amongst the other mods in future games anyways. But some signature moves completely change up the game, scratch that. Just some moves in general straight up changes the game. Parish Song. Everyone will faint in 3 turns unless they are switched out. Trick Room. Faster characters are now slower. Follow Me. Moves are redirected to this target. These are just a few gimmicky moves and I haven't even touched on the gimmick mechanics that have defined the recent games. In competitive matches, any Pokemon can theoretically have an unexpected set to surprise the opponent. Are they effective gimmicks? Not necessarily. But nah, we're not here to answer what makes a gimmick move set. We're focusing on the actual Pokemon today. So on one end of the gimmick's definition, there are shiny Pokemon, but every Pokemon has one of those. So then there are Pokemon with visual changes. But gameplay-wise, it doesn't matter what color Vivion is, they all do the same thing. Now on the other end, there can possibly be unexpected movesets for any Pokemon, but that doesn't narrow things down. We are finally approaching a definition of the gimmick Pokemon agreed by most fans. Because now, gimmicks are characters. Gameplay-wise, the last two factors of a Pokemon are their stats and ability. Starting with the former, this is what most stat spreads look like. If you excel at a certain stat, oh, wow, look at you, Snorlax, what a healthy boy. Can someone put Chansey's stats on the screen? Thank you. There are Pokemon with wildly unique stat spreads to the point that they are forced to a specific playstyle. Look at all these moves Chansey has access to. Take down, Thunder Punch, oh, even Earthquake. None of that matters when your attack is 5 measly points. Chansey is known to be a specially defensive wall, but they could be countered by a single physical poke. These stats alone force the opponent to prepare moves that focus the physical defense stat, or else they would eventually lose to a Chansey, slowly chipping away at their health and further stalling by healing themselves. What about a Pokemon that's both specially and physically defensive? Shuckle's purely defensive stat spread is accompanied by a moveset that can inspire a few different styles of gameplay, all of which are unconventional. Now, Shuckle can be played to stall the opponent, however, they can also use their defense to guarantee setting up hazards in time, playing more of a support role. Speaking of support roles, Generation 8 brought us Regieleki with the fastest stat ever. They're so fast that even when most Pokemon equip a Choice Scarf to go 50% faster than usual, Regieleki would still outspeed them. Now, Regieleki could be played like a straight up glass cannon. However, they also have access to Electro Web, which lowers the opponent's speed, allowing you to maintain speed control. Okay, but are there any offensive gimmick characters? Definitely, but these examples are balanced by a last factor in Pokemon's gameplay, abilities. Unlike signature moves, signature abilities are amongst only a few options for a Pokemon, making that ability feel closer to a Pokemon's identity. But did you see what just happened in the past few minutes? Gimmicks used to be extrinsic, not caring about the actual qualities of the subject, but now, Gimmicks are fully intrinsic, going as far as defining characters. Why look at Shedinja, one of the most famous gimmick Pokemon. They have a whopping total of 1 HP, a single hit point. No matter what level they are, just a single point. However, they possess the ability Wonder Guard, which makes them completely immune to any attack other than super effective moves and any status move. The inclusion of Shedinja to any team forces the opponent to maintain a Pokemon that could still somehow hurt Shedinja, or else it would be an instant loss. Now that we have the whole picture of moves, stats, abilities, let me list a few more gimmick Pokemon. Generation 1's Ditto can transform into the opponent, meaning that if the opponent has a super strong sweeper tearing up your team, Ditto can step in and use the same sweeper against them. That's why Ditto is often given a choice scarf, even if that locks them into one move, making them a faster copy of your opponent. The offensively busted Pokemon I showed earlier all have abilities that actually hamper them. To give an opportunity to your opponents to work around them before they become too overpowered. Another example is Wobbuffet's Shadow Tag, which prevents the opponent from retreating, but the only attacks that they have is Counter and Mirror Coat which are both reactionary moves that only hit back if Wobbuff was hit that turn. 
Now, Shadow Tag isn't a unique ability, and just like how there were gimmicky moves, I want to mention that there are gimmicky abilities that severely change the gameplay and are shared among several species, with some species being more popular in utilizing that ability. For example, Prankster. Very strong ability, makes status moves gain priority, where they can take place before regular speed tiers. And a few normally weak Pokemon become very strong supports, thanks to Prankster and the strong status moves provided by their moveset. Another ability called Levitate makes ground moves do zero damage, but on Electros, it cancels out their only weakness, effectively making them have no weaknesses. Storm Drain also negates water damage, but seeing Storm Drain on a Pokemon like Tatsugiri doesn't change the gameplay too much from any other Storm Drain user. No, the gimmick Tatsugiri is known for is their Commander ability, where they hop into a partner Dodonzo's mouth, doubling Dodonzo's stats at the cost of now fighting 1v2. So finally, we have gimmicks that change both the gameplay style and the Pokemon's appearance. Most of these are signature abilities, form-changing Pokemon, who can honestly make up a trope of their own. Wishiwashi has a massive school form as long as they're healthy enough? Morpeko switches the type of their signature move into dark or electric type every turn, and Aegislash can switch between an offensive and defensive stat spread, just to name a few. These Pokemon bring out exciting transformations during the match, but often their requirements allow for only a few ways to play out that character, thus making that whole character feel like a gimmick Pokemon. Gimmick nowadays is more often used in terms of a style, like gameplay, rather than design. Gamers across other games often use the term negatively. It's a trick to make a character feel more stronger than they are, to make a character feel more valuable than they are. But what is true value as opposed to perceived value in this case? We're not trying to sell mediocre cat food here. Sometimes, perceived value converts into true value. No matter how much your opponent rages at being slighted by your strategy, you still won. And there are plenty of fans who enjoy and pop off at the sight of a shiny Pokemon. Those are real emotions, deserved or not. Those are real results. You know, Pokemon has such a large fan base that there's almost a comical divide between casual and competitive fans, but there's a beauty into how there are still parallels between the people. It's almost as if there's an underlying tone of humanity. Many people may find gimmicks annoying, unreliable, and undeserving, but at the end of the day, gimmicks offer that element of surprise. And when balanced just right, they can make games feel new and exciting. So how did I make a gimmick character? Well, for this design, the concept came first, and they're based off of a real-life engineering gimmick. When molten glass is rapidly cooled in cold water, the glass tries to shrink, starting from the outside, shrinking inwards, pulling on the layer of recently cooled glass. This causes a lot of internal stress, but also prevents any additional cracks from forming, because the drop is compressing in on itself. Thus, the bulb end can withstand hammers and even bullets. However, the tail end is very thin, and thus the tail could easily snap. And that one break would cause the rest of the glass to collapse on itself, making it explode. This structure is called Prince Rupert's Drop. It can also happen naturally with rapidly cooled lava called Pele's Tears. So here's Droppert with their signature ability, Resilient, which maxes out their physical defense stages when they enter battle. Now, I'll just add that no other species can copy or steal their stats like their Pokemon's move Psych Up, but otherwise, Dropper's physical wall would shatter once you land a critical move, just like a Prince Rupert's drop. Dropper is also a loose reference to the barrel eye fish, which are known to have transparent heads with their eyes inside. The term gimmick is often used in the context of a style of gameplay nowadays, but in a creature collector like Pokemon, Gimmicks can define a character through their stats, move pulls, and or abilities to not only spice up the gameplay, but also to make a design feel more memorable. And I think it's also important to realize how gimmicks can be taken to different levels to keep surprising and interesting fans. 
if I change the order of the title to what is a Pokemon gimmick, that would be a completely different discussion that I would love to make once I have enough of my own game coded. I've been basically starting over as I'm getting the hang of Godot, but hopefully one day, I'll get to share you my thoughts behind this developing process. So thank you for watching till the end! And especially thank you to my subscribers and my Patreon supporters. I'm making weekly devlogs about my experience in Godot, so you can see me suffer in real time over there. But if you like this video, you can always share it and subscribe for free, as I got a whole series going over my Stemma project. Well thank you all again for watching, and I will see you next time.